are yet another episode of Off Stage with Ward Anderson. Uh, I am your host, yours truly. Today, we're going to be talking about diversity on screen. And I'm very lucky to have some very popular diverse actors with me today. Right here, this gentleman has been in almost every single television show you can imagine and is a regular on the popular sci-fi TV series Killjoys. That's Tom Allison. Hi. Howdy. <laughs> she has been busy, so busy, that it's hard for me to remember everything she's done. But you can see her on The Expanse. You can see her on Mary Kills People. You can see her in Cult of Chucky. And her name is Grace Lynn Kung. <laughs> a TV personality, a TV host. She has been the face of the Toronto Argonauts. And she is, uh, lucky her, a friend of mine, Jackie Perez. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? How you guys doing? All right. Good. Thanks, good. thanks for being here, you know. I, um, here's something interesting. Uh, we live, this is broadcast, although it's seen all around the world. This is uh, the most multicultural city in the world, Toronto, Canada, where we shoot this show. And, ready for it? I decided to do a whole episode, diversity on screen, and I've got three people. <laughs> That's us. Right? That's us. Oops. Now, we're super strong representations, <laughs> obviously. So up you the only whole, needed three. The whole <laughs> the yeah. city. Yeah. yeah, this is us. Multicultural yeah. country. Well, what's interesting about this is I was surprised at how few people I could find. I'm not saying that there's not a lot of diversity in Toronto, but in the film industry, when I went looking, I was surprised. Now, some people aren't available right now. You know, some people are out of town. Some people are in L.A. shooting something or what, what have you. But I can tell you that this was one of the hardest episodes mm. to, to cast. I did find, I, did, I will say this, a, as a black actor, uh, of minorities, that seemed to be the most common minority in sure. this city. Yeah. To find black actors, right? Which is different from city to city. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so for different sure. from city to city. So I have a friend who just moved from here. She's been working here for most of her career, and she and she's a black actress. And she just moved to BC, and she was like, "It's crazy out here. It's so completely different because there isn't as much in that casting group out there." But she, we were talking about it, and she was like, "But they're flooded with Asian, you know, like Asian actresses. So it's completely different from coast to coast." And another reason I think maybe sometimes that you might have trouble is. Because a lot of times, I think actors of color have to hustle in a very different way, which means that sometimes maybe they just are less available. Well, but in what way are they hustling? Like, is is, is it the hustle? I think is different because maybe a lot of times you're having to create a lot of your right. own work, so you're having to work in very different. Like the system just doesn't look the the everyday doesn't look the same, and so a lot of the creation of your own work maybe moving around a lot to try and cultivate more of that work. So that could be it sometimes. I, I, and I agree with you, and that's absolutely true. And yet, I think we all know that even in this multicultural city that we live in, if I was doing an episode with white actors on those couches, they'd be spilling over onto the side tables right now. The whole well, audience yeah. just full. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, when, I started, when I started acting, every time I was in a room, in a casting room, I would always be surrounded by Asian women. And I knew I was starting to move, like I was starting to, I was starting to feel momentum when all of a sudden I'd be like, Oh, I've got some black sisters with me. Oh, I've got some South Asian sisters with me. Like the, then all of a sudden I was like getting the multi-ethnic call and I was like, oh, things are smoothing. Right. And I knew I was like, oh, things are really cooking. Now I'm with Caucasian actors. Because it's true, really you're, you're really very segregated for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it was a measure of sort of how much more I was working. And the more that I worked, the more that broadened and actually the more I saw Caucasian actors in the room. Right. right. Well, with you, we have Asian actress, and I know that that means you're going to be called for every Asian ethnicity there is. With you, on the other hand, mm -hmm. casting people don't know what the hell to do with you half the time. No, I, I mean, we were talking, they come from an acting background, and I, <laughs> I haven't gone to a lot of castings because mine is more of, like, you know, going in as a TV personality. You're the or, personality. The personality or the in-game host for the Argos. Um, so they, they weren't looking for a diversity. It was, can you do the job? And like, luckily I can. And when I look in my world, I don't know very many Filipino in-game hosts 
or if I look on screen for like a news reporter or um, like a sports broadcaster, I, I can't name Asian mm -hmm. on-air reporters or actors or uh, personalities. Well, I can tell you some numbers. I always look a little bit at numbers, right? So for both of you, things are getting better. And by that, I mean uh, Asians on screen, it's going up slightly. It's very little, but it's slightly. I believe that it was at 3%, and now it's probably at 5%, something like that. For black actors, you're looking at about 12%. So right. as close to the actual demographic, or you know, society demographic, as it's probably ever been. Right. Right? Right. It, it has gotten better. Uh, in your industry, on-air personality, mm -hmm. still very low as far as on-screen minorities go? I mean, I just in the past year and a half or two years, I, I've seen an influx yeah. of diversity on air, but growing up, I didn't, I didn't see that at all. Or much like gender equity. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. That's the one place where women are doing better. As far as on air goes, say on television, mm -hmm. news anchors, it's 50%. 50% women wow. when it comes to uh, presenting the weather, presenting the news, uh, and that plummets to less than 10% once you hit 50. Wow. Right? And then what's, it, what's the stat in sports? That's sports reporting? I, yeah. I'd yeah. be curious about that. I don't know the that. stats, actually, but yeah. I, I, know, I know that. I imagine it's much lower. I mean, there's, there's fewer women in sports television in general. That's getting better. It is getting better. Like, I imagine, like in the past year and a half, I've, I've noticed that there are new faces, and um, the last few hires have been women. I think people have stopped being so surprised that women like sports. Mm -hmm. You right. know, it's for the longest time that was the joke, right? The women couldn't like sports or we, they didn't like sports. They don't understand sports. Or they wouldn't be able to talk about it. Or they wouldn't be able yeah. to talk about it, right? And I think we're finally getting out of that. Now, women are still the minority in sports reporting or sports television, but at least when they show up, people don't go, what the hell could she possibly know? Because the women that do it, you know, kick ass at it. They, they do know. they come from it. that sports background. Right. They were former athletes or they grew up watching the game, so. Right, exactly. So, and it, what, what has changed drastically that I've noticed is um, women, not just in sports reporting, but reporting on sports that are predominantly male sports. Because when women first came on the scene in sports reporting, it was gymnastics, mm, figure skating, figure, yeah, right. Right. You know, swimming, synchron tennis, synchronized swimming, right. synchronized swimming, women's tennis, right? So that is changing now. You're seeing more women with football or basketball or baseball and, and, and the men's versions of these sports, mm -hmm. right? So I don't actually have the stats on, on minorities I'm, I'm in that so industry. I'm so curious but. to know what the stats are too. Well, I, just from watching, I was like, Hazel May is pretty much like the only, I was like, non-white female that I see when I watch sports reporting. Mm -hmm. And the only one I, I remember seeing in the last like 10 years, possibly even. Well, you know, as far as not women necessarily, but minorities in sports reporting on television, I would imagine it's getting higher because athletes go into that. Right. Former athletes do it. Yeah. Right. They're superstars, so people want to hear what they have to say. Right. And they're the yeah. experts in it, so they become the analysts or the right. commentators. Yeah. Right. They can so they talk can about it. They speak to it in a, uh, from their first-person perspective. Yeah. Right. And there are and there are more minorities working in professional sports than, say, the entertainment industry or, or most industries, many industries. I shouldn't say most, but many. Yeah. Right. So so I would imagine that number is going up partly for that reason. Like you said, former athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be it. So. I think something's interesting that you were giving the stats for what's changed, but I always feel like it's good to be careful because now it's like di diversity and like gender equity has become like a really hot button. Like everybody wants to put funding and they want to say that they're doing funding for this. But I feel like sometimes when we put, when we're trying to put the band-aid on diversity and trying to like advance diversity, what happens inevitably sometimes is tokenism occurs. Yeah. Right. And that I feel like actually puts us backwards because we think oh, I'm doing well, we're moving forward, when you're like, actually, no, you're just, it looks like it, it the window dressing is like that, but it's actually doing more harmful things because you're entrenching these stereotypes that we've had for a very, very long time, and a lot of these are very race-specific. Right. Like, that's, you know, that's like... That's the issue. Right, you end, up, you end up having roles written in terms of performing in, the, in yeah. theater and film, or in the film and television, <clears throat> roles are written that specifically is black or specifically is Asian, so let's get this Asian actress and that somehow being diverse as opposed to just let actors of color play yeah. any role. That Unless role. it's specific yeah. about the race, that's the issue of the, yeah. the episode or, or the, yeah. the relationship. And I know that casting is very complicated, but sure. I mean, I recently, I read for like an American pilot 
and originally, you know, they, when, when you're submitting your first tape, you're always going out for one of the leads, but you're like, there's no way I'm going to get one of these. <laughs> Maybe if they like me, they might see me for another part. So I got another tape request, and they said, well, casting saw you for this one, but they were wondering if you would do this one. And I read it, and on the breakdown, like, usually it says, please submit all ethnicities, which is, like, just what they have to, what they have to say. And, um, and they all say it. They all say right. that, except this one was, like, diverse suggestions only. And then I read the sides and I was like, there's nothing happening in this scene. And a problem a lot of times you're just like, so now you're saying, why does, is this diverse suggestions only? Why does this part that actually is basically exposition like a narrative, just you're advancing the narrative without actually being character related. So this is where you're gonna put your diversity in? Like those things just you're sort of like, box. exactly. Yeah. And those, right. those are the ones where you're like, ah, I don't know about this, but what do you like what do you say like i i try to make a point of not going out for for things that i disagree with but a lot of times like your no goes into to, to, the, to know where, yeah, to they don't the get ether. the know or why they don't care no, they don't they're care. like busy they're doing pilots and like yeah, yeah and there's always somebody there's always That's, somebody else i'll take the job i'll take it <laughs> yeah yeah just people okay. lined up to replace i know they're all like right kick you out of the way get out of here <laughs> next yeah, exactly yeah totally so for yeah. those that don't know the term or don't quite understand the term what is tokenism what do you mean when you say that? Uh, so for me, I guess it's it, what it means is using the ethnicity that I am basically as like more of an idea. Like it's not attached. It's attached more to the culture and what that represents as opposed to the person and the character, the characteristics of the like it's it's a problem. I think when they what I like about like the Mindy project is like she deals with a lot of these like stereotypes but she's living them as like very real parts of the character. Mm -hmm. Whereas sometimes when they're a symbol of like the culture and you go, this is a stereotype about like uh, South Asians and like, or like Asians are really smart and we're all doctors and lawyers. And like, and, and every black male actor that I know is a gangster and he might have sold drugs at some point if he's trying to come clean now. Sure. Like those types of, they're not, I guess they're not so much based in character, but they're based in different sort of like archetypes and ideas that are not, not, not true and not like if you had a white character it would be different that's very character based even when you're like oh my friend Tom what's Tom look like like what's the first thing that most people would be like well Tom's a black guy, black guy. <laughs> black guy. <laughs> well, but what like well, Caucasian no. actor are you like yeah, oh well it's the, the white, white dude guy, like Ward's the, the white yeah. guy with the <laughs> brat and like just those it's like those yeah. little things and that's where I think like the changes need to be made it's those little those little things. So when you represent, like, that's why I think tokenism is trouble because they say, "Oh, I've got like we've got the the ethnic best right. friend," but it tells you that like when you're never seeing the lead be something other than maybe Caucasian, you're continually reinforcing the fact that it's like the the role of the person of color is like you can always be the best friend and you can be the, the fun best friend right. and the, the whatever, but you're you're always this thing. You're not the whole person. Mm -hmm. That's the problem of tokenism. Casting calls for acting is often like a police scanner, right? It's often them going, <laughs> oh, we're yeah. looking for a young black male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About five, five. Right? Yeah. About five <laughs> foot seven. Yep. Be on the lookout for that for us. <laughs> Pull them in if you see them. Yeah. You know? Just grab them off yeah. the street. We're looking for a young Asian woman. Yeah. Last scene. Yeah. Asian, pan, pan Asian. Pan Asian. Pan Asian. Pan Asian. Ish. You know, sort last of. scene in the Vancouver area, but maybe now it's in Toronto. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, Started that. Yeah. It's a funny. Uh, it's a funny thing to kind of watch because uh, what I see is, and and I say this as someone who's studied it recently. You know, so so this is not me patting myself on the back like I'm so enlightened. This is I started looking at this because I knew I'd be hosting this show. But as a straight white male, I haven't noticed a lot of this until recently when I started going, huh, I see what we have here. We have the random Asian woman thrown into the cast of three other white people. Yeah. Right. Because someone went, oh, this is probably going to look bad if we have four white people. Yeah. Right. Right? Yeah. And that's when you really, especially if somehow everyone's kind of pretending that she's not Asian. Yeah, there's <laughs> like, that I don't too, mean right? that it just never comes up, but yeah. you can read it and go, okay, that was literally written for just anybody, yeah. that part, right? And then like by episode four, 
they've started to realize it and they've got to write in a little backstory for that right. character. Yeah. So the, par the Asian parents come in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the context. Parents, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're a person, they're a person, they're a person. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, for, for weeks you've just seen them there talking, going, hey, you guys, you think we're going to win the race? <laughs> And then all of a sudden, by episode four, it's like, you know, I was just going to go make some dumplings. Do you guys want some, maybe some chow mein? Like, oh, I get it. She's Chinese. Yeah. Right. Ethnic oh, specificity. Right. That's where she's ah, from. Oh. Ethnic specificity. But yeah. they'll do it. They will, yeah. it'll, yeah. Be, it'll be thrown in. Or, yeah. or with, with a black character, it'll be, it'll be weeks of, oh, it's just Tom. Tom's just talking. And then all of a sudden, in episode four, there's some kind of a comment where, now Tom is black, right? Or, or something like, oh, Tom's your friends from the flavor, something from the yeah. hood, back yeah. in the hood. Or what hood is that? Or Tom about? takes his headphones off and you hear the rap coming out. Right, of it. <laughs> just no. get context. What's going yeah. on, buddy? Do do do. And yeah. it's like that's like the writers going, "Hey, look, we, we recognize it. Look." Yeah. Right. And I and I, it, it's really funny. I noticed it just when studying to talk about this show. I got to be honest. I'm, this is not me going like oh, I've always seen this. I'm enlightened. No. Do you find I, you guys have noticed it. it before? Because that, that's surprising to me that you that's only you notice it now. Because that's something I always identify when I see new shows coming in. I'm just like, how are they to develop these characters? Oh, well. And well, is but, it well, but I think, I mean, I think, I had a conversation like this with someone recently. If, you, if it's not your um, uh, scope of the world, your, your way into the world, mm -hmm. why would you look for it? Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, like there's no reason you don't know for what you to. Look to. For. Yeah, you don't look for it. If you're someone who's sort of looking for that opportunity or that window, uh, you're more aware of, of watching, you're like, oh, a great kind of black character. <laughs> so there's you this, know, yeah, there's this story that I have about, like, at Cineplex, they had this commercial that would always play before all the films, and it was like this little girl and her snowman that she grew up oh, with yeah. watching movies right. with, like, such a sweet, and then she like, ha and then the snowman goes, snow, yeah. snowman goes away, and then she has a child, and she like, anyway, so I was talking about it with my sister-in-law, who's from Malaysia, she's Malaysian Chinese, and she was saying how moved she was, because she just had my little niece, and she said like to see in animation, to see like a mother daughter and like an Asian mother and daughter, she was so moved, and I was telling one of my friends, who's a Caucasian male, about this, the, the trailer, and he was like, oh, I love it, and he's like, she's Asian? And I went and looked it up on YouTube, and I sent him the link, and we were both like, "Yeah, she's clearly like, if she's not like slightly, like, she's like, right. you're you're Asian, like clearly like it's ambiguous, but she's clearly like at least half, if not more." And it was like one of those really eureka moments where you're just like, "We are all the sum of every experience mm -hmm. that we've grown up with and the background that we come from. We can't like." everybody's formation is different. Mm -hmm. He's a white male who grew up in Toronto. I didn't grow up that way. I was so thirsty for any representation. As soon as I see something like that, it means something to me. Right. I, I remember writing like, Asian. what's that? I didn't realize she was Asian. Well, I, for yeah. me, it was like, I just, I latch onto it okay. right away. Like, right. I, like I saw a Greyhound ad once and they had a, like an interracial couple and I wrote them and I was like, thank you. I think that's amazing. Like, you didn't, it wasn't about any, like, but it, sh it showed me a part of the world that I feel like is a part of the world that I it's inhabit and live right. in. And it, and it means, and that means something. And when the thing is, is like when you don't grow up in that norm, you're constantly having to do this translation to put yourself in the feet of that character. Cause that's what we watch, you know, we watch film and television, like to identify with that journey. So when you're constantly doing that translation, you don't realize that actually people who do maybe come from that background didn't maybe have to. So it's not that, like you said, it wasn't, it just wasn't on your scope because it's not your experience. Yeah, why would it be? And yeah. that's why the, these issues are tough because sometimes it, it's just very personal and it's hard for somebody who also has come from that background to kind of have to explain why those things mean something. And then it's, and then it becomes very personal because sometimes it seems like bringing them up is maybe a criticism of somebody else. And it's like, it's not that. They're not, the two issues are not mutually exclusive. It doesn't mean, that you know, more fair representation means less for. Right. I don't think so. Take Tell me if I'm crazy. It. Tell me if I'm crazy with this. This is just my anecdotal evidence. This is just me watching television. Okay. When I see an interracial couple on television, the 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 minority is the woman. It just seems so often that yeah. the husband is a white guy. Right? Yeah, and I, th I think... Uh, I th and, and, and it's just my anecdotal evidence, but it was something I was thinking about where I go, I look at all these episodes, whenever I've seen an interracial couple, it seems that it's a white guy with 
you know, a, a, some kind of yes, yeah, a spouse yeah. of color, right. if you will. Yeah, so we can have like an exoticism that way, right? Like you're introducing the race, but in I, a and I find that like in everyday society, they like that's the norm where it's a white Asian couple, for example, um, and the male is white and the female is Asian. But if it was reversed, then people start to panic or they're like, that seems off. And yeah, that, and I always I was always like, why does that seem off? And I don't know if it's it's pushing down like from generations of pushing down that race and saying that it's not worthy to get that kind of or to attain that kind of relationship or that status. Yeah. And for a a white male to be in a relationship with somebody exotic, um, then you've achieved something. Or it, it goes back to all right. those things, and right. it's very sensitive. But yeah. But it's it's, it, they have those in dating. Like they've done a lot of research on this yeah. with like especially with apps now. Like. Tinder and all of that, they're able to ha like aggregate so oh, much right. data and always like you've got the exoticized, so you've got like an Asian woman, then you've got like a black male. And those are like the archetypes for those like, you know, like for all the things that we see in this, and this is like heterosexually at least. But that the people then who are on the sort of losing end of that are like Asian males mm -hmm. and black women. And those statistically are like the most untouched sort of like demographics and the least sort of, um, successful statistically in terms of those dating apps and those have a lot to do with I think our business and what we show and we're constantly emasculating our Asian men and that goes for South Asian and you know East Asian and we do that so I always think I have a hard time thinking of a time that I've seen on TV an Asian man with a white woman I, I mean I'm, I'm sure it's happened mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying my own viewer experience I just can't think of it I can't think of it and I can say that I know that Asian women are often portrayed as sexual sex objects exotic this kind of or thing like timid and like and that's what yes, they want or, who's not going to be outspoken but if not timid then then sultry right mm -hmm. then then sex pot right mm -hmm. but I don't see that with Asian men I don't see them portrayed you see no right. sexuality right yeah, yeah kind of yeah you know and and that's something that I've, I've begun to notice when I've watched, you know, this trying to see how often interracial couple, couples are shown. I'll also say this. I've noticed that when it comes to um, interracial couples on screen, more likely it seems to show a black man with a white man. Right. Right? Like that seems to be a lot of times when they show the, the gay couple on TV right. or something, that's the interracial couple you see. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Like more specifically... Like it'll be like a black man and a white man, and that'll be the couple. It'll always be that mix racially. Often, if they're gonna mix it up, that tends to be. Yeah. It seems like somehow, <laughs> it, it's it's like a comfort factor for someone. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's being made comfortable, and somehow that seems like, well, okay, that balances out somehow. But then if we threw an Asian man in, somehow then someone's it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's too crazy. It's too something for him and too something for him. It, or when they do odd. have an Asian man, it, they just tend to be they're like they're going to be so flamboyant and so out there. Right. And that's the only type of role that, right. that's, yeah. that you're going to And then see. usually with an older white man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Never, not, yes. not someone his yeah, own age. Good, often yeah. it's often someone who's a lot older yeah. than him, which is another trope of, of you know, in, in the yeah. gay world that you have that sort of uh, that relationship, and you go, that's just another stereotype. Not that it's not true in situations, but yeah, you sure. know, nothing is ever the norm mm -hmm. or the, the yeah. constant. Well, we've. Way. In some ways, you know, on this show, I often talk about such issues like this. Blank in film, you know, women in film, diversity in film. And I always say, you know, if you look back 50, 60 years ago and you look at today, you'd say we've come a long way. Mm. But the thing is, is it's always baby steps, right? Mm. It's, it seems that we've, it seems we've come a long way because it was so bad 60 years ago, right? But... It, when I talk about those numbers that like Asians are becoming more predominant film going from say 3% to 5% it's not really that significant if you look at it I go oh it's going up mm -hmm. wow yeah. it's going up 2% here or whatever but where know? is it going up is but, it the well, doctor who just advances the like it, or is it the like South Asian taxi cab driver who's just like here's lead. your stop right. ma'am yeah. like, that's their story like that's... those aren't those aren't investments statistically it'll go tick 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 but it's not actual actually advancing it, you know? Like Funny you should mention that. I did some looking up about this oh and to God. see what oh. it was. <laughs> and very thorough, very thorough, sir. <laughs> Bravo to you. Take it away, Ward. <laughs> but, Amazing. ready? I'll, I'll tell you this. Awesome. I'll tell you. Um, there's a little, um, I guess like you said, tokenism. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. There's also a little um, overcompensating going on now. Now people are going, okay, we got to put minorities in this movie. Mm -hmm. Let's put them in roles that are very flattering. And, it, and it's, <laughs> right? it's true, it's the sensitivity, it's become, right? right? We yeah. got to have a doctor. Well, they have to be so likable, right. and smart, so good and so looking, good at their job and, like, and carved from marble. <laughs> oh my lord! But there is some overcompensating going on now. We're we're talking because I look I looked it up. It turns out people would think that Asians on screen are often portraying, uh, you know, convenience store clerks or, or some of these roles that we you know the, the stereotypical role we used to mm -hmm. have, uh, the the Chinese waiter or whatever like that, right? Well, it turns out they're showing up a lot as judges. Doctors, doctors was like the real common one. The the Asian doctor that comes in and goes, it's cancer, yeah. and then is gone. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and and that was interesting. Um, more and more, we're seeing more uh, black actors becoming judges, right, and and lawyers and things like that. Black and that's women good. for a long time. Black women have been judges forever. That somehow is glorious. Because you got the oracle. You got oh, the yeah, oracle yeah, yes, archetype. Exactly. A nice, full-figured, fabulous black lady with braids and being all, you friend. know what I've got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Overruled, and it's like, oh, she's wonderful. She is. She's just, like, I'm gonna follow oh, that. I'm gonna that's a performance. That. that is such. That's stunning. You know. It's, yeah, we, but that's how we. Yeah. This motherly, and we. Yes, we yeah. believe that position. The matriarch. The matriarch. The matriarch. You know, mama's is, family. It's all that's all that. Uh, yeah. Medea. Okay, so let's <laughs> talk. For, let's talk for a I'm second. At all. Let's talk for a second about the characters. Okay, so for the longest time, there's a great movie from the early '80s called Hollywood Shuffle. Robert Townsend oh, God. wrote and directed. <laughs> And the whole point of that movie was about uh, a black actor trying to break out from the stereotypes mm. that he was always put in. Uh, and at that time, you're talking about drug dealers, you know, gangsters, criminals, right? And so that was true, the roles that he was showing. You know, the, what, what are some stereotypes that are still out there that you still see well, minorities in? Well, for Filipinos, at least, um, I mean, Every time you see a Filipino on, on, on screen, they're going to be a nanny. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, right away, right away. So you're going to be a nanny. Right. Or, like, you're going to be a nurse. Like I, like, I think that's the, like, if you're going to move up in the health world, the closest <laughs> role you're going to get is, is going to be health. a nurse. Because right. that yep. is, uh, I guess, that's what ref is reflective of society. Like, I mean, like, my parents always pushed us. They're like, can you go into accounting or can you go into nursing? I'm like, nope, going into media. But that's what usually you're going to see out in the world. You're going to see them as nannies. You're going to see them as nurses, maybe a doctor, but that's going to go to the Chinese. Yep. <laughs> I got that's that. That's going to be that role. You're covered. You got it covered. You're good. Yeah. So, and, so that's what you see a little bit more. Or you're going to see the, the flamboyant gay man. Right. That from the Philippines. Right. So right. those are the roles you w would normally see. Right. So to see a Filipino in in a regular role, and I don't want to say regular, but just a role that isn't defined by those structures, mm -hmm. is very rare. Yeah. It's it's those roles, and then lead singer of Journey. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So the and and it's like the next thing. Do you sing? <laughs> Do yeah. you sing? Yeah. Right. Oh, really? Well, no, I don't sing. Because all Filipinos. Do yeah. they ask you that? Sing. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like, you know, I was like, I can't play any musical instruments. They're just like, but, but you're Filipino. And I was like, never <laughs> ask me to sing, never yeah. ask me to play an instrument. That is not my forte at all. Wow. But those are part of those things, like right. those skills, I guess. People the expectation have. somehow. Yeah. Of it. yeah. So I'm not, I'm not crazy. The female black judge is a thing. Oh, God, yeah. It has okay. been for years. Okay. Years and years. Yeah. They, 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 everyone loves that when you need someone with... Gravitas, but sass, who can kind of, especially oh, if it's a comedic sass. movie, just to spin it with a little something extra. There's some but fabulous But you want that power, lady. but then you also don't want it too serious. Yeah, so there's it's a little, like, little, yeah. it's warm. You kind of want to be near her because she's entertaining and kind of friendly and probably cook some good food. Yeah. Well, it puts that, 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 that black mother okay. thing in there. You, you are more likely to see the black matriarch mm. in movies. Mm. I've noticed that. I don't ever see the wizened old white grandmother that walks in the room and goes, let me tell you, you need to behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> not often. She does it differently. But it there's, does it differently. Yeah. there's not that, that aha kind of preachy moment, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where someone has to come in and, and put the main characters in their place, right? With and this kind of unspoken power that they just, when they come in, you go, this is that moment. And then we all feel like, yeah, great. Or, oh, I love it. And you can laugh. And, 
they got that lesson. It's something that 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 that, yeah. that what's it called in, in Greek drama? Like the 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 last uh, the moment when that someone comes in Ex and Machina. changes. The, yeah, yeah, comes in and changes the whole thing. You know, it's that kind of. I think it's called the Tyler Perry moment. The Tyler <laughs> Perry moment. Listen, that made that boy a fortune. He and knows continue. what he's tapping into. He is tapping. He knew his audience. Yeah. But it's a good example of that. You know, like he got yeah. a whole audience that might not be going to but theater so or to segregated. movies. That's so segregated. That's it, right? Like it's, it's yeah. For a long time, the joke was um, if you had, like, say, a science fiction mm -hmm. show or movie or a horror show, show or movie, the black guy dies first. Right. The black guy dies. Um, that's where some overcompensating has come. People started to realize that, and they started to go, okay, if there's one or two people left, one of them has to be black. <laughs> and he, well, when they realized the gold mine was, they also got to write all those sassy black lines for them for the rest of the movie, which is like, wait a minute, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> they get to live and we get to laugh <laughs> like it's crazy a bounty. at them. It's a bounty. Well, yeah, cornucopia. Wasn't there this, this sci-fi show that had a couple of, a season or two ago, had killed off their, their LGBT, one of the, the characters was like, of the LGBT community, and they had killed her off Mm. And there was up, like uproar because they were like, you had like one character from the LGBT community right. and you, and you kill. killed her. <laughs> and, and at the same time, it's like, you know, like we're, I think like a lot of this stuff, it would be fine if we were at a point of equity. Because right. no one's suggesting that that's not true, that you don't know a, a, a wise, like an older black sure. woman and that there are like Asian doctors, you know, like specific, you know, Asian race doctors. but. I mean, I, I think it's just about until we get to that point of equity, some of these things are a bit, they're sensitive and we have to be, we have to be careful, but we can't protect, like, I have some friends and I doing some development work and we wanted, we were talking about casting and you're just like, but at the same time, you have to treat your characters the same because if you start protecting your ethnic characters and not allowing right. them to be as villainous or as whatever these, you know, like other real characteristics that you would for a Caucasian character, then you're doing the same thing. You're doing it backwards, but it's the exact same thing that's driving all of us. It's like we have to look at them just as, as characters and hopefully let the best person come in and, right. and nail the job. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. The best person. Hire the best person for the job. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, and that's, an interesting thing. that's an interesting thing to look at when you say it that way because I, I guess it's a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't thing because you want to take the work. I mean, the, you know, get into acting so we can work. Right, and so that's the problem. Is sometimes you know you're going to get that role where you're the stereotype, and that's got to suck. But then at the same time, so then when something else comes along and you feel like, well, I'm just shoehorned into this because I'm a minority, that's got to suck too. And at the same time, but then you're like, but I'm not paying a stereotype, so I guess I should be thankful. Well, I don't know. Does that make sense? Well, John Cho, like I remember, like earlier on, he like he he was really adamant in saying, I'm not taking like Chinese specific roles because I don't want to be in that stereotype. And then when the Star Trek movie came along, he's like, no, I have to do this because I'm like, why would I say no to this opportunity? Right. No. To play like Sulu. Right? And that's legacy. an incredible role. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a legacy so I'm not going to say yeah. no to this that. This is something that. different somehow. It feels like, yeah. yeah. And he has carved a whole career and he's got one of the most balanced, you know, like it's, he's, Doing a lot of that great sure. stuff, and he had that and he had that yeah. show a couple years ago where he was a romantic lead. He was a it romantic lead, like one season. and it was yeah, it lasted <laughs> the one start. season. But it was, it was a start. It was yeah. a start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, sure. like, somewhere. But he wasn't pegged as the Asian guy. It was yeah. this. He is the main guy. Yeah, yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. Well, now, okay. So when you were starting out, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. The role you would have gone for would have been, you, you know, it would have been the convenience store clerk or the, the the. The yeah. angry Asian woman saying, get well, out of here or something. I went out for a lot of immigrant roles and I had to do a lot of like accents that are not part of, you know. Right. And then they would be like, you have to do a slight accent. So I go in and with a slight accent and by the end of it, you're just like the takeout girl who's like asking for fried chicken in the back, you know. It's right. just like a terrible, terrible, but like, you know, you go in slightly and they'd be like, can you just... And I, and I know this from like my Black Astros friends. They're just like, they're waiting. They're like, oh, that was good. And you're like, just come out and say you want it sassier, blacker. And some exactly. Just, could you just be blacker? And so people are like, has anyone ever asked that? Um, uh, it, be it's blacker? been said different ways. It, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, different <laughs> ways. A, a little more flavor in that. <laughs> what flavor <laughs> are you looking for? What does that mean? Like, is it like, you know like what it means. Like Winnipeg. Exactly. <laughs> and and you know, it's like, I'm, it's 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 it hasn't happened to me often, <laughs> thank God. But although that made me laugh, it's just funny to me. But you know what they mean when they're saying, you know, yeah, yeah. Could you just? <laughs> The head you need goes a more down. kind of like, mm, and they look away from you, and you're like, 
Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm the one want. that one someone tried to. They were Could you be a little something. more aggressive with me on this one right now? <laughs> I was like, Could you look at me in a way that scares me and makes me feel uncomfortable? Like I'm holding a gun in your face. Do you face? know what's Could funny you? with that though? Speaking of that, there's another issue that another layer of this as a person of color, as a as a black person, black person. Um, why, why, is, why did you finger quote? Well, you are a black person. Well, the funny part is, yes, I am. But I'm also a white person. Yeah. If we're gonna use I know, this that. is my so interesting, is right? But no one considers. Black, but no one would ever consider me a white person. No. I right. never get hired as a white person, per se. No, I want to be clear. I get hired for a lot of things, thank goodness. I've had a very diverse career. But that's what I'm saying is that. No. But part of that is, when I started my career in like, you know, 1827. <laughs> uh, uh, it was, I believe we went out from the same part. It was same part. So well. <laughs> Damn you! Uh, but but right, it, part black don't crack apparently. Um, so so. <laughs> Thank, this your is, we're live. Thank your papa. Thank your papa. But but when I started out, I was. The the whole diversity thing was really. I mean, I'm sure it's always had a thing, but it was mm. really sort of starting to really bubble. And I came out of theater school, and I, at the time, for who was out there, I was. I realized really early on I was the right flavor at the right time. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was I was the right shade. Yes. Because they wanted someone black, but too black is scary. Yeah. But they needed to fill a quota. And I walked in the door and they went, great. He's black, so we can tick it. But he's not like that scary dark black. <laughs> Approachable. Well, wow. because at that time, oh, because if you look on TV, it wasn't like, unless you had like a, a matriarch, you know, the, mm -hmm. the judge or whatever, you didn't have people playing parts mm -hmm. who were dark. That was somehow uncomfortable for someone. And so I got, I got stuff because I was like, great, you can do things and you're this, you're that, you're just enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was aware of it and I thought, huh, interesting, okay. Uh, but what happened is for me, it opened up a lot of doors. So I had kind of a great career off the start because sure. they needed someone and okay, I walked in the door to fill the, fill the, the bill, which was great for me, but I was aware of my friends who I had who, who would come along in different generations who now are getting roles, but it took a while before everyone was okay enough for it to be okay. And it's a very strange thing when you realize you're sort of like the chosen one. Well, there's also something to be said about something with really minority like, oh, actors, absolutely. not actresses, with minority actors. Mm -hmm. I have had many of my, my, my black friends say there is something to be said about casting people thinking of who seems safe, who seems less threatening, who seems... And that's such an interesting thing to me. I read, okay, you ready? Uh, a little show that was very popular in the 80s called The Cosby Show. Cosby. Okay. Cosby. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Familiar? Does it sound I'm familiar. sounding familiar. Sweaters. I'm seeing sweaters yeah. and Felicia Rashad with entire rays that were amazing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Matriarch. Yep. Right? So, that show featured a black doctor and a black lawyer mm. living together in New York City. Changed. Changed before it went to air. That wasn't what they originally did. Mm. Originally, he was a limo driver, and she was a maid. Oh. Wow. Right? Since 1978, apparently. Yeah. Yep. So, they yeah. would have shot one episode. Yeah. <laughs> we have that. It's called Good Times. But, yes. But no, it was changed. Yeah. And it was changed because it was decided that would get the most viewers. It would, right. the most viewers, and that means, of course, a predominantly white audience, yeah. would feel the most comfortable with them if they were in those roles. Right. If they right. were in yeah. those jobs. And so they weren't. Uh, we're that. still so looking for all of the like from the like, original from the original scripts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still like a very like Eurocentric like in terms of like what's beautiful right. mm -hmm. and what's we're still like so it's like saying that it's like oh it's just enough color, which happens sure. in theater as well. Like oh, it's but it's oh, like yeah. it's just enough, but it's enough that we're still very close to the mark, you know. So it's like we get to say we did it. So they've met all but the guidelines. But it's okay. Yeah, yeah we, it's we're okay. helping. Yeah. Can you yeah. say that again, but make it sound a little more um, <laughs> with flavor? Worldly. Yeah, with flavor. <laughs> yeah. Can you make that sound more international? From like the streets in Ottawa. International. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he means more black. <laughs> yeah, Can you sound more black? <laughs> nice. Can you? But um, it's interesting. So th that that's interesting because like I have a lot of friends who it's like they grew up in a very diverse sort of. Um, Diverse upbringing with like lots of different like uh, lots of different ethnicities mixing and it's like all like sorts that. of yeah, yeah all sorts much. of them and then like what they they turn like they'll they'll have people comment they be like oh you're talking really street and you're like am I like is this what you got from television or is this just how I grew up with my friends right. like yeah. well I tell people that I, I was actually born in the Philippines mm -hmm. but oh. then, then they're like well where's your accent and I'm like <laughs> what I and was like, born in the Philippines I was how born old am I there? now yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, but I was raised 
in the GTA. So uh, very much, my exposure is very much. That's greater very Toronto area. Sorry, <laughs> For those greater of you Toronto watching. area. Very diverse, very yeah. multicultural. Right. So my uh, very much, you grow up and you learn from the experiences that you're exposed to. And my yeah. parents were very, like I was very lucky to be exposed to very many different types of worlds. Cause they're just like, you're not really Filipino. And I was like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> what does that mean? They're, Based on? Well, yeah. just, I guess, the way I carry myself, because, I mean, I danced growing up, it was classical ballet, or, like, I also did sports, and, you know, I look back, and I was usually, and I never saw that, but I was usually one of the two girls who were not European or Caucasian yeah. in that room, but, but I, I never saw it that way. I know people don't look at you and automatically assume Filipino. No. What do, what do people automatically they, assume? They think I'm black. They think I'm half, half Asian, half black. I've heard right. Jamaican a lot, and I was like, well, I, well, what do you mean? They're like, are you Chinese Jamaican, or... Uh, I was just like, oh, I okay. think that's based on how much we see it also on television. So Maybe. it's like I saw this um, I th Vietnamese, well, I get or one Cambodian. of these. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to pinpoint that it's Filipino. So I always give them a prize when they guess it. Right. With a gift. <laughs> <laughs> like, well done. <laughs> well, there was this video on the Internet where they they had like all of these different foods lined up and they were like, how good are you at being able to identify it? So you like you would match like the beef and you'd have to match it to like this is from Vietnam and like these dumplings are, yeah. and then they brought out five like Asians and had the people who labeled the food, they had to go label the humans. <laughs> and they were like, I am so deeply uncomfortable. I am oh so very gosh. sorry. Oh. But it's amazing, like even within wow. people, and they had like people who were like from some sort of Asian descent also do it. And they were, they were just as, in fact, Stumped. like some of the white, yeah. you know, like couples did better than the Asian wow. ones. But it's like, it just, like there's no one look, so there that's isn't. why I asked, like, I even what does it mean to be Filipino? That's what like, it what is. They're it, just like, well, you don't really look mm -hmm. Filipino. You have a different build. I was like, excuse me. You're like, I grew up in the Philippines. Like, yeah, yeah, right. They know. They yeah, would know. Complete I don't. Strangers, I like, yes. mean, I don't even know because the Philippines it's is. So it, vast. There's so yes. many islands. There's like, there's so many people coming in and out. It's, there's so many mixes in it. Like the Philippine culture itself is such a mixed race right. yeah. that yeah. everyone has a different look depending on what region you're from. Sure. I have a friend who's originally from Pakistan. And a really good looking guy, and he's been told at auditions, people are like, where are you from? And he'll say, and they'll be like, really? You don't really look mm. like. He was like, I've never seen a, po and he was like, I'm, I lived there. Yep. A lot of people actually look like you. They're like, look you're like, really actually. good looking for like someone oh. from Pakistan. Oh. And oh you're my, like, what you where say? are you getting this what stuff? You and that's that? where I go, we're doing a really crappy job <laughs> in our industry. <laughs> because people can say that. And he says he gets yeah. that. Is so for every person who, yeah, yeah. for every so person that says that saying, to him, imagine how many people are thinking it but don't say it. Right. And that, like, that's it's extraordinary. Amazing. Like, is this person, the person who has made that comment, is never from Pakistan? No. No. But again, yeah. they're an expert. Well, I've seen speaking, two people. You're really good you don't looking look for someone like from them. Pakistan. Well, well, you don't wow. fit the quota. And Where speaking of <laughs> speaking of Pakistan, yeah. speaking of that, uh, there, there was uh, a Middle Eastern actor who was supposed to be on the show who couldn't make it, but, and. Well, I'll tell you, Spirit. every Middle Eastern actor I've talked to, I say, so what does uh, your resume look like? And he said, terrorist. Terrorist, terrorist, <laughs> terrorist, terrorist, yeah. You know, they, oh go, my God. they go, it's been a lot of terrorists for the past few years. <laughs> <laughs> or it's been person that is suspected of being terrorist, and then you find out it's he's really not good. the terrorist. Wow. So there's Set been up. a lot of that. So varied. And, and what, about, nice. what about women who look like they're of Middle Eastern? What did they get? Put at, or do we terrorist see them? wife? <laughs> yeah, who never speaks. Who doesn't speak? Like, they just react. Right. Yep. <laughs> Woman blown up happen. by terrorist husband. Ugh. Who doesn't speak? And and that's true. That's a you know, that's wow. Middle Eastern actors are in that right now, right. where black actors used to be in gangster, drug addict, yeah. criminals, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, sure. And Asian actors used to be in convenience store, Chinese takeout, delivery. Doctors. D doctors, Almost right? Doctors. So Oops, now. Nice. I'm a doctor. You're a doctor. <laughs> Don't leave it. I bought it. You've Come also see. got this thing that I didn't, until you and I talked before, you and I, have you've been on my radio yeah. show, and I found it fascinating. I don't know why this never occurred to me again, just my plain white ignorance, but that you said, yeah, I've played every Asian ethnicity yeah. because, you know, the cast of people don't care if I'm Japanese or not. They'll go, Asian woman, today you're Japanese. Yeah. Close right. enough. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that's... One of the first things I did, one actor stopped me, and this was years ago. I kind of gave him kudos for that. But he was like, does it bother you playing 
someone who's like Japanese and I was like we are so far from any sort of I can't even begin to consider that because there's so little representation within that like yeah I'd love for one day for it all to be like for people to be like before fresh off the boat to Taiwanese I, I I'd never seen that represented outside mm -hmm. right. of Taiwan like it just I think a lot of people might not even know it's a country but you know like it's it's just hopefully as we move along we find that nuance like like again we're saying like all of these looks they're very blended and it's mm -hmm. okay like our job is to inhabit well, that actors. special it's, world it's, where it's yeah. like my whole life it's isn't exactly, exactly what my character is and there's Tricky. some melding of the two yeah. but we're just looking for some sort of like some sort of equity some sort of real representation some sort of real where where you're getting to see where you're seeing first the person and not all the things that they look like and represent yeah right yeah yeah a full character. Yeah, the person. Yeah. Just like what you would when you initially see like a, 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 a white actor. I remember reading this, I, I had picked up this Murakami novel and I was sort of very distracted when I started reading it. And I got through like t two or three pages and I realized I was kind of really tuned out. And, and then I clocked myself and I was like, I just naturally assumed this is a white protagonist. The writer is not white. I am not white and I'm also not a male. Why am I? And I just realized I have that same default because this is how, this is how I've been raised. Yeah. Right. My default naturally goes to that and e even though I am not. So I can't imagine if I was, you know, like a, a white male, like unless I really spent my time really fighting outside of that, that like these issues wouldn't necessarily enter my everyday. But they have to because I'm in it and I'm, when I grew up in Ottawa, like it was very multicultural. I didn't consider myself like Asian. And then as soon as I got into casting, it was like, you're Asian, you're Asian, you're Asian. Every part you go out for is Asian. Then all of a sudden my social circle was like all Asians because we were always auditioning together. It right. became like my friends. I never had like all of these Asian friends. I had a very mixed group and it started to dictate my social circle. And that was because of film and like we were just constantly you being shared put, experiences. put but you're, together. Is it the opposite for you? Because you're in media, but yeah. you're predominantly, I mean, yeah. I guess you're surrounded by white people. Well, the, Ar the Argos, uh, I'm the only Asian person either head office or even on the, t on the team for the That's for the, the Toronto the Argonauts. The Toronto Argonauts. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good. He is very CFL. good. CFL. Yeah. Um, no, for the longest time, I think there, there was like a, I think uh, I've been a t on the team for about five, six years. And in my fourth year, another Filipino girl tried out, and my coach was like, a Filipino girl's trying out, a Filipino girl. I was just like, yes, I can see her. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I I'm can also see viewing. <laughs> they're just Amazing. like, they're like, she better not take your spot. I'm just like, I'd be happy if she did, because then there's more of us. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, that sounds so Why my spot? Why can't she be in the, <laughs> in the, in the team as well? Zone, yeah. That sounds like, so condescending. <laughs> he goes, like, Tom's yeah. showing up at a party, and a black guy walks in, and I go, Tom, hey. I want to have he's here. Great. Like, Told you it wasn't just you. Well, please, what do you say I know to that? That's, than you. But that's what it is. Hey, there's another uh, Asian person there. And you're like, hey, great. And they mean it. The and like, uh, they mean it like. Oh, so excited and thrilled you for you. You have somebody to relate Wonderful. to. Wonderful. See, <laughs> there's more. Well, yeah. Okay, I gotta say this, and again, this is because I'm a white male. Okay. What? But I'm watching TV, whether it's you know the, the people on screen on the news mm -hmm. or something like that, or I'm watching a movie. I notice when a person of color is on screen. I notice when there's a minority. I mm. notice, I'm watching a TV show and there's Jennifer Aniston and in walks a black guy. I notice, right? Do you guys notice? Oh yeah. Oh, sure. you know what I mean? Are oh, you so used to it as well, just seeing everything is white that is, is when, it, when the minority shows up, you go, oh. Well, is it you like know? your family? Like every time there's a Filipino celebrity or actor or whatever, everyone knows that. It's like, you know Bruno Mars? He's a half a Filipino yeah. or like a quarter Filipino. Right. Or like, like the Vanessa Hudgens, she's an eighth <laughs> Filipino. You're like, right. great. <laughs> like just, reach, just reaching anything just to get that kind of connection mm -hmm. that they're part of that Western world or that North American. It's, right. it's reflecting world. your own experience. Like if mm -hmm. I see like, an, like, like my sister-in-law when she saw that trailer with like the, 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 the Asian you know, mother and daughter and their snowman, it was like, it just, even though it's not, it's a cartoon form, but it's like it's just reflective of your experience. It might look a little bit like your grandparents, like yeah. all of a sudden you're seeing, you know, like you, you know, like anytime I see like any elderly couple who's like over, well, oh my God, when I see an interracial couple who's like over 60, I just, I have to hide because I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, so do you know what they had to <laughs> overcome? This is so beautiful. And it's just like, it's just being able to see like what, what it means to see that, 
who is it? Oh, I can't remember what article it was, but uh, uh, a woman from the States took her father, who's Mexican, to see Rogue One. And he said afterwards, he was like, how moved he was at, for the first time since he's been in the States, since I don't know how old he was, the first time to see a Mexican actor being of his background, mm -hmm. but not as like a gardener or somebody picking up garbage. Like yeah. what that means, mm -hmm. like yeah. what, when you've never had it and you finally see it, like, yes, it really, really means something. And it would be nice, I guess, not to be so excited about those, those small things, you know? I, well, and, and I say I notice this, and I say, and again, this, a lot of this comes out of uh, a late in life enlightenment. Growing up in the 80s, mm. you know, as a, a, a boy in Atlanta, Georgia, I, oh, wow. I didn't oh, notice. I know. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't, you know, I didn't notice how white everything was. And, and it's because I'm a white guy. Right. It, it, it is. It's just, it's because I'm a white guy. I didn't notice it. Now I notice it because I, I live in a multicultural city. I work in a more multicultural industry than, than it was when I was coming up, right? So I, I do notice these things now, right? Yes. But so much of it, I wonder, is, is um, you know, it, it, is it changing? Am I the only one? You know what I mean? Are people changing and starting to kind of, or is it, or is it just we're still in that phase of tokenism, like you said, right? I, th I think it's a bit of both. Like, sometimes that does happen. Overall, I think things are moving. I think it's just important to be careful about that. Like, we all know what happened with the Academy Awards mm -hmm. when Moonlight mm -hmm. won and you know, La La Land, and there's a lot that you read in behind the, like, people were like, oh, Jordan Horowitz was so gracious that he gave, and it's like, yeah, he did, he was gracious. But also, those three producers gave their speeches and Moonlight got, like, 60 seconds. Yeah. Right. And, like, what that means, and for, I think for me, it's all okay to have that opinion, but don't, try not to disregard when people are offended. Try and just listen to what they're trying to say because it's not just them taking it personally. It often is coming from a place of like, this is what it means when people aren't being given this space or that they're not allowed to say that that was hurtful without it being an entire like, it is. I think it's again, it's like us not being able to see it from that point of view. So we're very quick to, to be offended by that. And all of us, like we are all coming from our different like, it's not bad, like every time you're saying, I'm coming from it from being like a white, a white male. Mm -hmm. None of these things are anything like good or bad. It's just everybody's experience is mm -hmm. what it was. We can't right. change that. It's what made us who we are today. So I guess it's just trying to like, to stay open to the dialogue because a lot's happening in a lot of different points of view. And uh, there were times like where I said things that I thought were funny and then afterwards I learned, oh, actually the connotation of this is not, it's not great, I should let that go. It's all just about like learning and kind of progressing as we go. And one thing that I think is really exciting is that like of my friends who are like, I, I have that like a bunch who are like way, way younger and growing up and it's like, none of that matters. Like I was doing this doc and there was this, uh, this actor, Ted, who was talking about his daughter and he was like, she asked me, I think like, what's, what's a daddy? They were watching the, the US election stuff. They're like, what's a black person? She genuinely, and so, and Ted was talking about like how he had to be like, well, trying to, he was like, how do I explain that without bringing my bias into that? How, how do you? But she just genuinely has grown up also with like gender pronouns. Like it's not mm -hmm. weird for kids to be like they, he, like I, maybe for people who didn't grow up with so much fluidity, like it's, it just takes a while for our brains to adjust, you know, but like what a magical thing for her to not understand right. what that means and how do you explain something like that without bringing prejudice into it, your own bias that you grew up with, the ones that you've been taught or in the times that you grew up. That's a good point. Can I ask you something? Sure. Is it easier because you're all attractive? I mean, you're a very attractive woman, you know. Thank and you, Ward. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> But you're a very attractive YouTube, man. You too, Grace. You too, Grace. It's all lighting. But you guys, but, but you know, Hot. let's let's talk about that for a second because yeah. everybody here, the three of you, are, are are very attractive people. Very attractive people. You know, does that help? Right. That's such a pet peeve of mine because it's always the most, and I don't no. mean this for ourselves, yeah. but it's always the hottest of them that break through because that's like what's yeah. most it, digestible that, to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's we're okay. pleasing to the eye, it's the most pleasing to the eye, the biggest, I say. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, but is that something, is, is that a reality? 
I think it's, and the it's a reality for sure. It has to be. <laughs> We're it's, always more like taking like the the things that good looking people. <laughs> there was, oh, I can't remember in Sex and the no, City. They were like. Wrong. I think that's true of anybody. You know, We're white or minority. We're always much more yeah. accepting. For sure. Yeah. Especially in show business. I think that's true of anybody. In banking, I think in any business, the most good looking were just. You just want to be drawn to them. You're drawn humans to them naturally. Were, right. So you're going to choose them. Whether right. it's an audition, whether it's like a casting. It's, you're just, it's going easier to the bank. Or you want to go yeah. to them because you want to have a conversation with them because you're not looking at anyone else anymore. You're looking at that attractive person. Right. When you have serial killers who are being proposed to in jail, not all serial killers are being proposed to in jail. No. Who's being proposed to? The people Those who are, are generically good looking. Yeah, exactly. Generically good looking. Yeah, exactly. Generically yeah. Good looking. Generically yeah, right. looking. Right. I mean, that's it's just it's something that like all of us and and people get away with it. I always think it's interesting, like people's obsession with eye colors and they're just like piercing. And you're like, you know that's an absence of pigment, right? That's not actually something about but someone's it's, it's soul. Unique. But it's, exactly, but, yeah. it's like this rarity. They're looking rarity for that exotic and, like, look. Yeah, yeah. unique look. Always but aware. that's why I was asking. And those are words I hear too. You're like, you have a very exotic look. But that's, that's kind of what I was getting to with you <laughs> because, you know, that's horrible you're, not, you're not auditioning <laughs> for a role, you're playing you, Yeah. Right. you know? And do you think that it, has that been something? Being being an, a, an attractive Filipino woman yeah. has been something like they're, they're looking for that exoticness. Yeah, and it, like you said, you, we couldn't pinpoint necessarily it, that it's Filipino, but it, that's a, you, you have an exotic look about you, and like it's something we necessarily necessarily haven't seen before. So let's see where we're gonna go with this. So right. yeah, there have been opportunities because it's it's something you don't see because, for example, for like cheerleading, right? You're gonna see like blonde, 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 red, like a redhead. That's mm -hmm. unique. So right. they're going to be moved up right away, or like a colored person. But they're like Asian. Oh, we haven't had one on this team in a while. So we're going to, yeah, okay. But I mean, that that helps you. I mean, that might might get your foot in the door, but it's really red hair. Red hair. There you go. I'm work on, on it. <laughs> That's your thing. Can I'm you blonde grow that? For four years. Can you do it? Can you but grow the red I, hair? If I could grow hair at all, I would <laughs> whatever color. I would let it be whatever color that it wanted to be if I could do it. So, but I think but, that's what know. it is at the end of the day. It's like it'll help you get your foot in the door, but you have to be the one that closes that door and like with you with who you are. That's how I like to think of it. I'm right. Of it. I like that. I it's think that's I don't think you're convinced though. No, no, I am. <laughs> I you know what? It, it's uh, like I said, one of the goals of this show isn't just to inform the audience, it's to enlighten the host, right? I, I'm learning as we go along, well, right? Right, so. In no business is it harmful to be attractive to someone. Right. That's just human beings, you know, like, I, I do, in, and I, uh, but I feel like some of that is very cultural as well. Like we're very obsessed with that in, in North America. We're also very ageist. So it's like, we love young, we love That's another fresh. episode of this show. Ages. Oh, Ageism. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Very you know what the real. crazy thing is? is that All the like, women on that episode are 30. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> the demographic that's perfect. But the crazy really. thing you were saying <laughs> about, watching. you know, like North America is the certain, like, like what things we attain for. Yeah. If, I go to, if I go to Asia, like me having dark skin, me oh, having like, no, like no, just no, long no, hair no, like this, yeah. I am the wrong type for that. Yeah. They, they, love, they love the light skin. So if you go there, they're going to be like, I want to take a picture with you. Like they're just going to, like you're so exotic looking. Right. But because I have dark skin, it means I've worked in the field or exactly. I have no money or like status. I'm poor. It's, really? it's a status quo. It's oh. complete opposite. I, went, I yeah. went to the Philippines and like I had like friends and family, they're like, oh, you need to try like this papaya light soap. Up. I'm like, excuse me? What is it? That's for your skin. I'm like, something wrong with my skin? Like oh it'll it'll blight in your skin and bleach it. I'm like huge in India what? too, massive and like yeah. some of it is chemical and very like it's so really they don't have tanning or salons or tanning beds over there. They have bleaching salons and bleaching beds for your skin, face yeah. and your skin. Yep. Now is that yeah. is that North American it's culture? Is that is that this desire for North American yes. it's, culture? It's that Western ideal, uh, trying to obtain that Western ideal. But also like the Western ideal of like the East. Yes. Like right. The, that yeah. porcelain, Nose, porcelain, white, uh, and yes. the like clean, like the, you know, like and the, the ageism is very specific. Where it's like, actually, if you look at, for instance, generally the red carpets in like the US, and then you look at the red carpets in Britain, now they're coming a little bit more together. But for a while, Britain, it was just like, some okay. of them just rolled up, yeah. you know? And, and when you watch their film and television, it's not as flash for the most no. part. Yeah. 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 Now yeah, it's, it's changing people. a little bit more, but you see real people mm. and you like, look at, Look at like Days of Our Lives, and then look at Coronation Street. Does Coronation Street look like people you run into on the street? I think so, right. a little yeah, bit more. It's true. I do not walk down streets that look like anything in Days of Our Lives. Never mind the fashion, the face, the hair. You're on the, the wrong hair. streets, clearly. <laughs> Tom <laughs> does. You miss Tom I walk down right the streets all the time. Hey, hi. Yeah. But Gold. then you get like drawn into the story, and then people fall in love with 
you know, like I think we're, it's natural to like watch somebody's journey and just fall in love with that actor and fall in love with that person who's right. portraying that. I just think like if we mix it up, like just take a little bit of a, you know, like Benedict Cumberbatch, I don't think is a generically good looking guy, no. but he has the chops he has a and he got look. the right, yeah, he got the right yeah. sort of like parts and people love him. Right. He's just like, let's he's take a, a little bit guy more at the end of the yeah. day. Okay, last, last minute, just real quick. Um, you can you can go anywhere with your career tomorrow. Where would you take it? Where would you like to go? Is it is it seven o'clock news anchor? Is it sports highlights or the desk? Sports highlights on the desk. Yeah. All right. There's a role you can get tomorrow. It's your dream role. What is it? Uh, it's changed now. It's 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 like I want to host a reality show now. <gasps> yeah. I I discovered See, me kind of as reality? me on TV and I'm like yowza. Cooking show? Come on. Oh, okay. I love baking. You'd be in charge of that. Just same, be me. Same question. Oh, Ultimate role. Right I now. want you to take Get Out, Jordan Peele's Get Out, and smash it with Black Mirror, and that's where I want to be. Wow. Get Out meets Black Mirror. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think you can wow. do it. And with that, thank you, panel. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you so much. Another episode done. I want to thank our guests, Tom Allison. Grace Lynn Kung, Jackie Perez, and as always, when the show is over, we hope you join the conversation off stage. Good night.